a lot of responsibilities. Hey, Brother Jack, uh, welcome tonight. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brother Fred. As Sherry said, the title tonight is Gatekeepers of the Kingdom. Yeah. And so this is, uh, we each have gates in our individual lives, uh, and that certainly we're uh, gatekeepers over that, over what we see, over what we hear, over lots of different things. But we're looking at a greater perspective, a, lar a larger perspective tonight, because we're talking about gatekeepers of the kingdom. And what I want you to realize, there are uh, people with who are gatekeepers, and, and of course all the leaders have the potential to be gatekeepers, and, and that is uh, they can either bring forth good or they can bring forth evil or stop evil. <clears throat> and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Particularly, we're going to emphasize the movement of the Holy Spirit, and we have responsibility to be... Uh, uh, be proactive in, in receiving the movement and allowing the movement of the Holy Spirit. What I want you to know is that there's a, a, a realm of the supernatural and there's the realm of the natural. And somewhere that there's a boundary then in between those two realms, the, the realm of the supernatural and the realm of the natural. And we live in the natural realm but what we want to do is to open up that boundary between the two so that the glory of God comes through. Now, gatekeepers, uh, they are initiators. They're passionate about the movement of the Holy Spirit. And, and one of the things that they do is to set an environment uh, for the movement of the Holy Spirit and, and uh, allow him to move and do what he wants to do. And of course, Jesus taught us about this when he taught us how to pray. He said, uh, pray that it, the kingdom come, that God's kingdom come and his will be done on the earth. And so that's bringing the supernatural realm into the, the natural realm. And uh, Jesus gave the keys, uh, of course, to Peter, but that was for all of us. Uh, we all have those keys. Uh, from Matthew 16, he talked about the keys of the kingdom. And that's, uh, uh, he talks about binding and loosing. And so we can uh, loose the, the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit, and we can bind up evil and keep evil from coming. And so we'll cover those uh, things uh, again in more detail. But what I want you to recognize, we're all potential stewards of the movement of the Holy Spirit. And uh, let's just think about some uh, how important it is for the Holy Spirit to move among us because that's where the gifts operate. Uh, that's where the miracles occur. And we want these things to happen. We want the glory uh, to be on the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Okay, so I want to start with uh, uh, to say that in the Bible, there are gatekeepers in all the tabernacles, uh, the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of David, uh, David's tabernacle had over 200 gatekeepers, and they were always there. Uh, and, uh, of course, Solomon's uh, temple had uh, gatekeepers uh, with it. And so the Bible talks about gatekeepers all the way through it. And the psalmist said in uh, Psalm 84.10 is that he desired to be a gatekeeper. Now, I could use any of the words gate or door or opening or portal or entrance, but I'm going to focus tonight on the word gate and gatekeepers. And, and we know that those are interchangeable with doors and, and portals and things. Uh, but he said, the psalmist said, I want to be a gatekeeper in the courts of heaven or in the, in the courts of God. And, and so is that in your heart? Do you desire that? Let's read this out. I'll ask Harry to read this. Uh, Psalm 8410. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. Hallelujah. I want to be a gatekeeper. Do you want to be a gatekeeper? That's somebody that's going to bring the glory down. Are you passionate about the movement of the Holy Spirit? And, and then uh, secondly, uh, there's just three verses we're going to start with as a core for what we're talking about here. But you can desire to be a gatekeeper. And uh, we're going to tell you how to how a gatekeeper operates tonight. Right. 
Second thing, it, these are the words of Jesus. Did you know Jesus said we're, he has gatekeepers as his servants? This is New Testament. These are red letter, red letters in our Bibles. Red letter, Jesus divided his servants into two groups, the gatekeepers and others. The gatekeepers and the non-gatekeepers. Which, which are you? Are you going to... Yeah, you, you want to steward the movement of the Holy Spirit. And, mm. and he's talking about the days that we're living in right here. And I'm going to ask Sherry uh, to read this verse. This is in Mark chapter 13, verse 34. And this is from the message uh, translation. It's like a man who takes a trip, leaving home and putting his servants in charge. Whoa. <laughs> he had, Jesus ascended on high and he gave a commandment for his servants and put them in charge. You are in charge of some things. Don't, don't just be uh, comfortable and at ease in Zion. Mm. We're in charge of some things. Let's find out what we're in charge of. Each assigned a task and commanding the gatekeeper to stand watch. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There are gatekeepers and there are non-gatekeepers. Right. Gatekeepers steward uh, the movement of the Holy Spirit by opening gates and reopening gates. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Between the realm, between the supernatural the and, and the, the natural, natural to mm -hmm. bring forth heaven on earth, to bring forth the glory of God. And, and then uh, Jesus also said in uh, John chapter 10, uh, talked about gatekeepers here. I want to share to read this. John 10 <clears throat> verses 2 and 3. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper. Opens. Okay, now we've switched. We, we've got the the one who enters by the gate, and that's Jesus. Now we've got a gatekeeper. Hallelujah! The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Okay. Now we could say, well, this is the Holy Spirit, and obviously it is. But the Holy Spirit is, is in, in you, young men, and in me, a and He uses us to open the gate for Jesus to come forth. Hallelujah. For the very presence of the Lord to come forth. We're the ones, the gatekeepers, that open the gate for him to come forth. Ooh, so it's hallelujah. not our natural hallelujah. abilities. We're opening the gates for him to move Amen. through Amen. us, to bring uh, prophecy, to bring hallelujah. prophetic words, to bring miracles Ooh, through hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's by the Holy Spirit, of course. But he's in us. He's moving through us. So these three basic verses here that just give the core of the message, and then we're going to expand on it and elaborate on it. I said gatekeepers are initiators. I love initiation. They, yes. they, they are passionate yes. about the movement of the Holy Spirit. And there are two uh, people I think about that were, to me, were real inspirational to me as initiators. They brought forth the glory of God uh, at a time uh, it shouldn't have even happened. And the first one is Mary, the mother of Jesus. In, in John chapter 2, at the wedding feast, they ran out of wine, and, and the mother of Jesus wanted the new wine. Hallelujah. But you know, Jesus didn't even encourage uh, she said, oh, oh, they're out of wine. Now, so basically what she's saying, we want more wine. We want the new wine now. We've had the, the mm -hmm. natural wine, wine. We're ready for the new wine. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said, well, woman, what do I have to do with you? It's not my time. Right. Oh, he's not encouraging her, but she's an initiator. She's going to Hallelujah. bring forth the Hallelujah. new wine. Hallelujah. We'll bring forth miracles here. Amen. Okay, Amen. read this chapter. <laughs> John 2, verses 3 and 5. When the, the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, What business do you have with me, woman? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he tells you to do, <laughs> do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you see, she's opening the gate. She's opening yes, the gate yes, for yes, yes. For, for the new wine Woo! to come forth. She's Hallelujah. an initiator. She's a gate opener. Amen. She opened the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. Okay, now the second one I'd really like to, uh, again, inspires me mm -hmm. to think about it. And this is the Seraphonician woman in uh, Mark 
uh, chapter seven, seven, is that right? Mark seven, 26 through 29. Okay. Now, now uh, just let me say this okay. before she had no covenant basis right. to have healing or deliverance or uh, for a move of God to happen in her life. And she I mean, needed deliverance for her daughter. She wanted her daughter set free hallelujah. from demonic influences, uh, possession. I mean, and so I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. Now the woman was a Gentile of Seraphonician descent, and she repeatedly asked him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread, which is healing, and throw it to the dogs. Oh, let's just pause for a minute here. You, you see, she's not getting any encouragement, not even from Jesus. Mm. And, and his disciples wanted to shut the door on her and send her away. So she's mm -hmm. not getting any encouragement from anybody, but she is an initiator. She's got passion. Yes. She wants her daughter delivered. She wants mm -hmm. miracle mm -hmm. here. She wants deliverance hallelujah. here. Oh, hallelujah. And so she presses on in. Glory but she God. answered and said to him, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed off of the children's crumbs. And he said to her, because of this answer, go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for initiators. <laughs> Isn't that Somebody exciting? that's going to move. Somebody that's going to get up and move in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord would say, this is the season. This is the time for you to move. Not sit down on the Lord, but sit up and take notice of what I'm doing in the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We receive it. You know, the Lord says, don't be at ease in, uh, in, Zion. in Zion. Don't don't get comfortable where you are and just say, oh, if it happens, it happens. No, get, get with it. I believe that's what the Lord is saying. He has given us power and authority to do some things to bring Amen. heaven on earth. Amen. He's, that's the mission. The mission is to bring heaven on earth. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus told us to do. That's what he told us, how he told us to pray. And, and we need to be about the Father's business and bringing glory on the earth. And that's where the gifts are going to be in operation. Amen. You want to operate in the gifts. You want to be used of the Holy Spirit and operating in the gifts. Be an initiator of bringing forth the glory mm -hmm. from heaven to earth. earth. And let the Holy Spirit move. Be be one of those gatekeepers. Hallelujah. 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 That's what's needed in this time. We've had a lot of people who are lukewarm. They're just sitting back and saying, oh, if it happens, it happens. Or let somebody else do it. But, but, but he is calling us. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, developing a company of prophetic gatekeepers. Keepers. Hallelujah. That's who we are. Hallelujah. A company of Prophetic, prophetic gatekeepers. Gate now, there's a lot of reasons that uh, keep people, hindrances that keep people from opening gates. And the first one is knowledge. They, they don't know uh, about the scriptures, about gatekeeping and who is responsible for opening the gates. They don't have this knowledge uh, that after this message tonight, you'll have the knowledge. Amen. And the second thing is identity. They don't understand. They've been called to be a gatekeeper and they don't understand how to do it. So if you understand that God has a calling on your life to open some gates, to open some gates, and what am I talking about here? It's not just in your life. It begins there. It begins in your life. You need to uh, control what you're listening to. That's a gate, your ears. And, and what you're seeing, you know, That those are gates. And so you have gates speaking. in your mouth and you have your senses and all of these things. You have gates personally, but what we're talking about today is for the kingdom. So it's a greater vision. It's a greater vision. And so that's a part of the hindrances. Uh, many people don't have the greater vision. Uh, uh, there are four hindrances that I want to talk about. And one is the knowledge. You, a lot of people don't have the knowledge that they have a, a calling and a responsibility to open gates to bring heaven on earth. But that's how Jesus told us to pray. And, and they don't have an understanding of who they are. 
who they what their calling is. They don't understand their identity. And third, they're not around people who are gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're they're and initiators. They're they need to be, and all of us need to be with people who are initiators, who are passionate about the movement of the Holy Spirit. And, and then fourth, they don't have the fourth hindrance is they don't have a large enough vision. They just think about, oh, my problems. Oh, I've got a lot of problems. Well, sure. I mean, the devil wants to get you so caught up. That's right. In your in little your world. Problems. In your problems uh, that you cannot impact people around you. But what the Lord told us to do is to pray for the government. Amen. Pray for the schools as a part of the government. Yes. And, and so are we going to just let the devil have our schools? Are we going to let the devil have our uh, government? Are we going to let the uh, devil have our businesses? No. You, you know, the church has been uh, sitting back at ease and, and just focusing on what is inside their building. Right, the four walls. But, but... For almost 200 years, we had a God in our schools, and we had God in our government, and in the courts, and, and we had God, but now they don't let it happen there, because what? The Christians have sat down and, and thought they had no responsibility for what happens out in the greater world, mm -hmm. but they do. You know, God so loved the world. Amen. Oh, he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So where do, you, where do we want to keep his son? Locked up in four walls? No, God Ooh, so loved hallelujah. the world. Hallelujah. He sent, Come his, on. See, he sent his son. And then gatekeepers need to open it up for the son to come forth. Amen. And, Amen. And, and to do what the son has can has an agenda to do and what only he can do, but he has to do it through the believers. We're not going to turn our schools over to the devil. We're not going to turn our Hallelujah. government over to the devil. And so Hallelujah. we're going to be Hallelujah. talking about how can we reverse all of that. And that's Amen. what gatekeepers Amen. are about. And, and that's why we're talking about gatekeepers of the kingdom. And I want you to know that it's a prophetic gatekeeper that we're talking about tonight it's the prophetic voice uh, that's going to open gates and we're going to give you some examples here and, and I, I want to start first with uh second kings uh, chapter seven and let me give you the background on it there was a, a nation called aram at that time today we realize it's syria. syria okay so there was a great invasion of the syrian forces uh to israel and they and they encamped around about Samaria, the capital city, and other cities. And inside that city, of course, was the king and also the prophet Elisha mm -hmm. and, and uh, lots of other people. And they were starving in there because they were being besieged by uh, this great army. And so uh, that's the background. And we see that in, in chapter 6 of uh, Second Kings. But what I want to do is to go into... Uh, chapter 7 of 2 Kings, and we'll see that Elisha opens the gates. He opens the gates with his prophetic word. So let's look at this here. Would you read these verses? Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel. At the gate of Samaria. At the gate. Did you hear that? Then the royal officer. He's opening up the gates. Mm -hmm, on whose arm the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, If the Lord should make windows in heaven for the rain, could this take place? Elisha said, Behold, you will. Now listen to this. But behold, you will see it with your own eyes. But because of your doubt. You will not eat of it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh Hallelujah. Okay. So let me tell you what happens now. Um, okay, the, the city is besieged by a great army. And it, with Elisha's prophetic word, he opens the portals of heaven. And there are four men out there outside the mm -hmm. uh, camp. And these were lepers. And, and they said, okay, let's see. Or if we go inside, 
uh, some area we're going to die because there's no food there. If we go out to the camp, uh, maybe they'll kill us. Maybe they will let us live. And so they got up and started moving. But it was the word of Elisha that said food is going to be abundant and prices are going to be cheap tomorrow at the gate. Mm -hmm. at, at the, the gate. gate. Well, the gates, he's opening the gates right here, but he's opening supernatural gates. And then what happens, the supernatural gates open up and a great army, supernatural mm -hmm. army, mm -hmm. comes running down and uh, they've got yeah, horses and chariots, chariots and soldiers and uh, supernatural. Oh, uh, glory to God. And, and the... Uh, the Syrian army, they hear it and they just run. They just run as far as they can run. They don't take anything with them. They don't take horses. They don't take camels. They don't take food. They don't take clothing. They're just throwing everything off so they can outrun a supernatural army. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so these four lepers, they go out there. Yeah, and just and, help themselves. <laughs> and, and they find a lot of food and clothing and gold and silver and and, and uh and then they say, oh, oh, we better go back and talk to the gatekeepers and let the gatekeepers know no, what's, what's going, really on. going on out here. And so sure enough, the, uh, the king said, okay, we're going to send out some people. They went out and they couldn't find any of that army. And uh, so they, um, he put his royal officer in charge of the gate. But see, it's dangerous to be in charge of a gate that you don't have the anointing uh, to be in Ooh, charge of. Elisha was the one that Whoa. opened the supernatural gates Hallelujah. here. So you have to have that anointing. And, and that uh, royal officer tried to open the gate and the people trampled him because they were starving. They ran out and got the food because, and the food sold and it was abundant and it was cheap the mm -hmm. next day, mm -hmm. just like the prophetic word said, said it was. Hallelujah. But see, this is not all natural, but it's bringing the supernatural into the natural realm. Now there's another example I want to talk about the prophetic voice, and that was Jesus himself. And you know, he he was a prophet. He is a prophet. He'll always be a prophet. And he says something in uh, uh, John chapter 11, a, a prophetic word to open up the glory portals. Hallelujah. Let's hear this. John 11, 40 through 44. Jesus said to her, Martha, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Oh, he's opening up the glory portals. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Out came the man who had been dead. Ooh, 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 glory. Hallelujah. That is a prophetic word, and he's opening the glory portals, and, and he raised the dead. Hallelujah. This is an example. Now, and there's three things we're going to be talking about here. And this is the first one is the prophetic. It's all prophetic voice, but first are the prophets. And then we're going to talk about prophetic intercessors. And then we're going to talk about prophetic worshipers. Mm -hmm. and, Hallelujah. And, and these are, these are and psalmists. And so these are, these are the uh, different ones that we can talk about. And, and you may not be a prophet, but are you part of a prophetic company that's opening gates? I Hallelujah. believe everyone in this session has a prophetic anointing upon them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So first of all, the prophets, we saw it with Elisha, he opened the heavens. Uh, we saw with Jesus, he opened the heavens, the glory came out, raised Lazarus mm -hmm. from the dead. He had been dead four days. Oh, <laughs> but glory to God. Hallelujah. Here he comes out and Jesus said, loose him and let him go free. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to switch to the next group. First one were the prophets. Now we're going to go to the prophetic intercessors. Now I want you to think for a moment that uh, in Matthew 16, we're not going to go there, but I just want to say that in Matthew 16, uh, Jesus asked uh, the boys who who the people said he was, and and they said, "Well, you're this prophet, or you're that prophet." And and then uh, Peter said, uh, or Simon Peter says, "You're the Christ, the Son of the." living God. And, and, and Jesus said, Oh, Simon, you're, Oh, I tell flesh you. and blood did not tell you this. No, but your father. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you some keys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what hallelujah. a key. They lock and they unlock. Uh -huh. They open and they, and they close. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep it closed. And I give you the keys. Now this wasn't just keys to Peter. 
This is key to, uh, keys to his disciples. If you're his disciple, Hallelujah. he Hallelujah. wants you to have keys that are going to open and close gates. And we're going to talk about now is prophetic intercessors. We can open and close gates. And the things that he was talking about, uh, as he gave the keys to Peter, he was talking about binding and loosing. And so let's l listen to this about binding and loosing. Matthew 18, 18. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, this is from the Amplified Bible, uh, Amplified Translation, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. So how do we close gates? How do we open them? Sherry's telling and, and whatever you loose, permit, declare, declare lawful on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. Okay. So we're talking about prophetic intercessors can use the keys to bind up evil and, and to loose uh, God's glory to bring it forth. And so these are just keys. These are keys what to open the gates mm -hmm. or to close the gates because we have two different kinds of gates. We have the glory gates uh, to, that brings glory to to earth from heaven to earth and that's where we have healings and miracles that's where all of the gifts of the spirit operate but we also have evil and behind the evil gates see that's what jesus said uh, to peter he said behind those evil gates are evil forces mm -hmm. and demonic forces and you can bind them up and the gates of hell see this is a different Ooh, kind of gate hallelujah. the gates of hell, hell will not prevail, prevail against my church yes i mean hallelujah yeah. and so so Prophetic intercessors, the prophetic voice, see, is going to open the gates of glory the, uh, so that the glory is poured out, but they're going to stop the evil. And, and so who is in charge of your community? Oh, hallelujah. It's the believers who know their responsibility, who know their identity, that they are gatekeepers hallelujah. and they can open up the glory gates to bring forth glory on the earth in your community Amen. and they can bind up and keep evil forces and evil plans from happening Hallelujah. keep evil forces out out of your yeah. schools Hallelujah. out of your government out of your business Hallelujah. glory Hallelujah. to god you've got a great responsibility Hallelujah. okay so i'm talking about three things First, and this is all in the prophetic voice, as opening and closing gates. First are the prophets, mm -hmm. then the prophetic intercessors. Now, we're all called to pray. We're all called to pray for our government, right. pray for good government. But intercessors, see, they use these keys more than other people. Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. the gatekeepers use keys more than other people. They bind up what is to be bound, what has been bound in heaven, and they loose what heaven has loosed. They they bind up evil and they loose uh, glory and the, and the things of God, the supernatural things. And, and so mm -hmm. it's the gatekeepers who use keys of binding and loosing. Yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, just uh, pray some uh, wimpy prayer, but they're not using the keys. But people yeah. who understand that they are a part of the of the prophetic gatekeepers, they know how to use the keys to open the gates of glory and to close the gates of hell. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now we're going to Hallelujah. move on to the third, third group. One. So we first we talked about prophets, then we talked about uh, prophetic intercessors, and now we're going to move to prophetic psalmists. And this is this is exciting you know um psalm 24 uh, mm -hmm. it, it is a really important psalm and, no and uh it starts with um it talks it has three components psalm 24 has three components the first component is about god god created uh heaven and he created earth he created everything okay so that makes him king he's king of glory Amen. okay second group is, uh, the second group part of uh 
Psalm 24 is talking about who can ascend to where God is. In other words, who can go to the space of God's space or the realm of God, and that are those people who have a clean hands and a pure heart and are truthful and faithful. Now, the third part of Psalm 24 is talking about God invading In our space. human space. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. And how do we do it with a prophetic worship song? I want you to share to sing this song. This is from Psalm 24. Lift up your gates, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory oh, hallelujah. how do we get the lord to come here we've got to be singing some worship songs amen oh, oh prophetic songs lift up your head oh gates hallelujah the, the, it's speaking to the gates Open up your heads, oh you gates, and be open up because the King of the Glory is coming, coming in. in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise so, God. So Praise God. The, Praise God. The three Praise different God. ways we're talking about. Now I've got another uh, passage here in uh, in Acts. I won't share to read, but let me give you a background first. Uh, for a while, there were two tabernacles. There was the Moses Tabernacle and the David Tabernacle. Now Moses had rituals. And uh, and the ark was uh, represented the the presence of the Lord, and the ark see had went out for battle, and then it had been lost to some enemies. But David got it back. Uh, it came back, and then got, David got it, and he brought it into the, the David's tabernacle. So now you had for a while you had these two tabernacles, uh, and, and one of them had religious rituals but it was empty of the presence of god the Whoa. other one was praise and worship david set up wow. praise and worship wow, wow, 24 wow. 7 and Hallelujah. the presence of god was there see moses had kept back the presence of god it, it, only one person could go in there one time a year is all back behind the curtain but david had made it accessible and with praise and worship brought forth the presence of God. Amen. And and so that's a symbol of the time that we're living in. There's two different kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, organizations. Uh, there, there's the empty ritual religious organization. And there's the, and, and there are those worshipers of the Lord Amen. who are bringing Amen. forth the Amen. presence of God. So that's how happening in these days. A re, an empty religious relig, rit, ritual. Are, are the real thing, the presence of God, oh, where amen. you're ushering in the presence of God oh, and the glory of God. I want to be in that latter group. And in the Council of Jerusalem, in, in Acts chapter 15, we find out that the David tabernacle is going to be uh, rebuilt and restored Hallelujah. in this time period that amen. we're living in. So read these verses. Acts 15, 16 through 17. After these things I will return, and I will rebuild the fallen tabernacle of David, and I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name. Well, that's you Hallelujah. and me. Yeah. We have access to the to the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. With presence, and with uh, praise and worship. Amen. That's, that's what it's talking about. And this is at the Jerusalem uh, Council in uh, Acts 15. So this is New Testament. This is the days that we're living in. Amen. And so now I've presented three different ways to open gates. One are the prophets. One's the, the second is the prophetic intercessors. And now the prophetic psalmist. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We, we hallelujah. need to be... We need to be passionate about the movement of the Holy Spirit on earth and around us, in our governments, in our cities, in our, in our uh, schools. Don't be passive and sit back and, and let God be taken out of everything. When God is the center of all, he is the oh, king yes, of, of glory. glory. He created it all. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for being here. I'm going to turn it Thank you, to Jesus. Sherry. She may have something. Hallelujah. And we do have with us, we have some prophetic psalmist. Uh, we have Michelle Pritchett uh, with us. We have our daughter, Amy Elizabeth. Uh, we have others uh, that the Lord gives you songs and in your heart and and you bring them forth and they're blessings to the body of Christ they're, they they bring healing they bring salvation they bring deliverance and so i just want to to say thank you uh to all of you uh, as you move forward uh in this particular uh uh message tonight as you take it to heart and as you say you know i want to be that gatekeeper uh, i want to 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 bring that prophetic voice i want to see those gates opened up and uh and and i want to see those gates close uh on uh, some evil uh maybe it might be in your family it might be in in the in the situation around you but you can open and close those gates and we've given you some examples of, through the scriptures uh, about how those gates open and close. And I believe that this is a very important uh, season. Uh, I, we just heard the prophetic word that came forth about this is a season of hearing the voice of the Lord and doing what God has told you to do and moving forward in those, those spiritual things. It's not time uh, to be distracted with other things. And then, you know, many of us, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the enemy's tactics is to bring those distractions. But praise the name of Jesus, uh, we can uh, stay steadfast uh, in what we are supposed to be doing. 